Hello again, Splice Strategists, and welcome to Operation Vorpal Metal. In a stunning change of tactics, the aliens have stopped attacking gas stations in Cairo. Now they are attacking the Sapporo Observatory, a much more pertinent target, I feel. In exchange for our help, Sapporo has promised to give us the latest in Japanese engineering, which I can only assume is a Wii U. Plus, they'll be throwing in the engineers with it. Kill a few greys, get some engineers and a Wii U. How hard could it be? Bum bum bum. We're going into this mission with DJ Sucre, Maddie, Beatoper, and our new rookie, Eva Lemmy-san. Let's hope that she is able to make an impression on the team. Now, to start off, this is a rather large map. And the early missions tend to only have two groups of three sectoids or three groups of two sectoids. So, we're going to be spending a lot of this mission looking for the aliens, I feel. For that reason, we want to move slowly across this map where there's plenty of cover. For this reason, I'm going to be following along the backside of this truck to start. I've got a visual. Or, the aliens could inconveniently reveal themselves to me right at the edge of my vision, but not where I can actually shoot them with an overwatch shot. Very inconsiderate of them. So now we have to consider where we want to do this engagement. We could sit here and still use the cover of the truck. The problem with that is it then lets the aliens come up and take this area of I don't know what these things are. I Tanks of something? Regardless, we don't want them to be able to get that good cover. So we're going to move Sucre and Maddie up so that we have that cover instead of them. In the meantime, we'll keep Beetleber back and hope that they trigger an Overwatch shot with him. If we can, we really want to get Beetleber a promotion this mission. Snipers, before they get their second promotion, really aren't that good of a class. Once they get their second promotion, though, for reasons that we'll go into when he finally gets his upgrade, they become awesome. We didn't see the aliens move anywhere, so we can be pretty sure there's probably at least one in Overwatch. First things first, we move DJ Sucre up to confirm what we think the aliens are doing. We try to learn from our mistakes here at Quarkcom. Sure enough, one alien is mind-linking the alien who's in Overwatch. Luckily, with the position that he's in, that means we can move Maddie up to these storage crates. Now, I can't move her any further without getting an overwatch shot triggered. So I put her into Hunker Down. Hunker Down is a great defensive ability that doubles your cover and makes you immune to crits. With Maddie now hunkered down, I'm going to put Beetle Burn to overwatch. This should discourage the aliens from trying to take a flanking position on Maddie between these two tanks of curious liquids. Next, I'm going to move Evil Emison to a location where she's more useful. But, she can't get there without triggering an overwatch shot. To lessen the likelihood she'll get shot, we will move her there by using Dash, where we use both her moves at the same time. This decreases the odds to hit. So we move her, and sure enough, the alien is going to take a shot at it. After breaking this window... And then he... Breaks the w Did he break the window twice there? Let's go. Okay, what? Huh, he, he, he broke the window twice. I, I I feel like there's a Chuck Norris joke here. I just I just don't know what. With Evil Emison now in place, we move DJ Sucre away from the Chuck Norris sectoid and wait to see what the Chuck Norris sectoid decides to do. What he decides to do is get that flanking shot. Unfortunately for Maddie, he doesn't decide to go between the tanks where we have an overwatch shot. No, he decides to go to the other side of DJ Sucre's tank. And this is where things go pear-shaped. Kids, it's time to discuss a very important mechanic in XCOM, and that's called Panic. Whenever something bad happens to a soldier in XCOM, they roll on the panic table. When a soldier panics, they do something that's usually dumb. They might run away, they might shoot at a teammate, they might hunker down, or sometimes they actually shoot at the aliens, but you don't want to rely on that because it's a random chance. So Maddie got damaged, and she panicked. Luckily for us, all she did was hunker down again, which is what I wanted her to do anyway. But taking damage isn't the only thing that can cause someone to panic. Do you know what else can cause someone to panic? Seeing a fellow soldier panic. 
Oh yeah! Welcome to the concept of the Panic Circle. When one soldier's panic causes another soldier to panic, which leads to a cascade of poor decisions. For example, let's watch Evil Emmy-san here shoot at Maddie because she's panicking. That's right! Soldiers killing fellow soldiers. Welcome to XCOM, everybody! And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse than killing your own soldiers, Beetober decided he's going to take a shot at Emmy. And what's worse is Beetober's a sniper. That means he actually could kill her in one shot. Come on, Beetober, get us the clutch miss! Well, it wasn't a clutch miss, but at least he didn't kill her. Luckily for us, DJ Sucre is able to keep his cool in these high-pressure situations. He has a will of Ramston Steel. And now, with Beetleburr and Emily panicked and Maddie dead, this entire turn rests on his green shoulder. And we're back. It would seem that the soldiers aren't the only ones who are subject to panic circles. Upon the terrible situation I found the team, I decided I needed to vent and complain to someone. So I promptly stopped recording, all tabbed out of the game, and complained to a friend of mine. When I came back into the game, I sort of may have forgotten to record a little bit, and some things have happened in the meantime. 1. DJ Sucre killed the Chuck Norris sectoid with a clutch crit shot. 2. Evil Emison and Beetober stopped panicking. 3. The other sectoid shot and damaged DJ Sucre. 4. Evil Emison gets her first kill on the other sectoid with an Overwatch shot. 5. DJ Sucre healed himself. 6. Beetober apologizes to Evil Emison for shooting her with a sniper rifle. 7. Evil Emison apologizes for being the traitorous team killer who snuffed out Maddie's life. 8. DJ Sucre points out that the paperwork they have to file with the Human Resources Department after a friendly fire situation is staggering. 9. The team decides Maddie must have died courageously, charging through alien plasma fire, not hunkered down into a corner cowardly while Emmy-san shot her in the back. 10. I get this nice little ringing sound effect. And now that we're all caught up, let's get back to busting some aliens, because let me tell you something, busting makes me feel good. So I estimate we still have four aliens left, and since aliens can only be encountered in groups of two or three, that means we have two groups of two sectoids we're going to have to find. But it seems like the aliens are going to bring the party to us. Halloween is until Thursday! No. Yeah, and please don't ask why the aliens sounded like Gollum, I, I don't know. So, Beto Burr is flanked, and we're not in the best position. Now, we could take a shot with Beto Burr on this one alien with 55% odds, but that's essentially a coin flip, and I don't want to risk leaving him flanked with a coin flip. So I move Beto Burr to better cover, which is to say to somewhere he actually has cover. Evil Emison has a different issue. She really has nowhere she can go where she can take a shot and have cover. So it will be non-traditional. Moving her behind the same crates Beetleburr is behind will give her cover from the alien by the tanks. Then she just simply gives the alien on the truck a party favor. Hoorah! With that trick-or-treater now gone, we just have to deal with the one behind the tank. Now, we could just simply have Beetleburr throw his grenade, but I'm worried about needing that grenade for the next pair of aliens. Plus, he actually has a shot at killing this alien straight with a pistol. He has a 50% chance to crit and an 80% chance to hit. Let's see if he can't do three damage. Or, or, or you could just miss. Okay, well, that, that's an option. With Beto Burr and Evil Emison having used up their actions, it's up to DJ Sucre to make sure this gray doesn't go anywhere. So we move him up a little bit and then have him in Overwatch. And luckily, the alien doesn't decide to do anything, even go into Overwatch. Curious choice. Maybe he got spooked by finding the corpse of the Chuck Norris sectoid or something. Who knows? Anyway, we're going to give Beto Burr a chance to redeem himself. Nice shot, and now we just have to find... Oh, the mission's done? Oh, what? So, I've never been part of a mission where there were only four aliens. That means this is the easiest mission that we'll ever have. And Maddie still got killed. Welcome to XCOM. We're happy to see that Evil Emison did earn a promotion despite her team killing, and she's going to be our heavy going forward. But in XCOM, if you're not getting ahead, you're getting behind. And because Evil Emison and DJ Sucre took damage, they're going to be spending a lot of time in the ER. 
This means that, likely, Beetleber will be the only veteran going on our next mission, and he did not get promoted. So, this is going to be a rough next mission. That said, Sapporo's thankful for our help, and they sent us both the Wii U and the engineers that we'll need. And the soldiers rejoiced. Yay! Yay. Now, let's take a look at the country chart here. While Asia's all happy that we helped out Japan, Egypt and the rest of Europe, they're not so pleased. Countries dislike it when you ignore their problems. If panic level gets too high, countries might end up leaving the XCOM project and withdrawing their funding. What they're going to put their funding towards beats me. Maybe they'll try and build a wall of peace like those idiots in Pacific Rim. Regardless, they're not my problem until they decide to go into the red. After we're done seeing which politicians hate us, it's time to go to the barracks. First to pay Maddie our last respects, then to give evil Emmy-san her new name, Zero Five. Next, we get over to engineering. We see that by getting those extra engineers, the cost of a satellite is now 77 double S's. Then, we go downstairs, see that our excavation is complete, and we decide to excavate out the rest of the top level. Then, because I have the cash, I decide to build a power generator. Buildings need power, and though I have plenty of it right now, I might not later. It's honestly a little bit early to be building any of these, but I find that it's more frustrating to be ready to build one building and not have enough power for it than it is to have too much power. After that, with nothing else to do, we scan for trouble. And as we do so, our research on weapons fragments ends. This means we'll now be able to build a scope for Beto Burr, and for our next research, I go for Xenobiology. Then it's back to the space police scanner. And wouldn't you know it, some UFOs getting all up in our grill. So we get Maverick and Goose into the cockpit and send them on to the highway to the danger zone. SP-300, go get him, Mav. I'm going for missile lock. Let's see if we can scare this guy out of here. Come on, lock up, baby. Lock up, baby. Lock up. I got him locked. Bingo. Central, this is Voodoo 37. We have a confirmed kill on Bogey 001. I repeat, the UFO is down. Nice work. Central out. All right, people. Retask Recon Satellite Bravo and get me a visual on that crash site. Magnify. All right. This isn't important, but it's always bugged me a little bit. No matter what continent you shoot down that alien craft, it's always the same coordinates on this display. These coordinates are somewhere near Pueblo, Colorado. We're, we're nowhere close to that. That is all. Still in one piece. Commander, I recommend we get a strike team to the crash site immediately. Thanks for the tip, sweater man. In all seriousness, though, we, we will be doing exactly what he said. So, as predicted, Beto Burr's the only veteran we're taking with us on the mission. The rookies who will be joining us on this campaign are Citrus Architect, Jimmy, and, after some shuffling to make sure boys and girls are even, Pharaoh's Queen. For those not in the know, Pharaoh's Queen's my cousin, so now I might be getting my family killed. Joy of joys. So, before we head out, we give Pharaoh's Queen the med pack, and give Beto Burr his shiny new scope to improve his accuracy, and we're off to impound the UFO without a warrant. It's fun being an ultra-national pseudo-military force. <laughs> oh, yes! These were the fun operation names I was going for when I edited the mission name table. Get your number two pencils ready for next week, everyone, as we take on Operation Vengeful Calculus. Until then, I'm Splice, and you can be my wingman anytime.